This is the NASHDO Transportation TV Special Report on the Knowledge Session, Integrating Resilience into Decision Making, the Need for Metrics and Methods, sponsored by RSNH. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, in 2021, the U.S. experienced 20 separate billion-dollar weather and climate disasters, from tornadoes and severe winter storms to devastating wildfires, heat waves, droughts, and floods. NOAA estimated the total damages for 2021 to be $145 billion. Dave Sweeney, Chief Executive Officer at RSNH, served as session moderator, setting the stage for the panel discussion. Last fall, Secretary Buttigieg and the U.S. DOT released their Climate Action Plan, in which guiding principles were identified to address the existential risk posed by climate change on the safety, effectiveness, equity, and sustainability of our transportation infrastructure. Sweeney then pivoted to the unprecedented $47 billion in funding for resilience and climate-related programs authorized by the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, or IIJA. On the panel to discuss putting those funds to work were Mark Williams, Executive Director of the Texas DOT, Ed Sniffen, Deputy Director for Highways at Hawaii DOT, Will Watts, the Assistant Secretary for Engineering and Operations at Florida DOT, and Amy Flannery, a surface transportation analyst from the office of the U.S. DOT Secretary. In her opening remarks, Flannery focused on efforts to define and measure resilience. One of the things that we did fund that was um, actually published in the fall of uh, 21, it, call your attention to it, this is a report that was conducted at the request of Congress by TRB. Uh, that looked specifically at resilience metrics and asked the question, do we have them within the industry? And if we don't, what is needed to get to that point? And so when, when um, Ed was talking about different lenses, you know, we're very comfortable talking about safety and operations and mobility. Those things are very common. But when we start to think about resilience, everybody has a different definition of what it means and we don't necessarily know how to measure it. So one of the things that came out of this report from TRB was, there may not be metrics yet in the industry, but here's a potential framework that you could start from. Panelist Ed Sniffen said that adding a resilience-based approach to planning infrastructure projects took decades. Prior to the shift, Sniffen says Hawaii DOT responded to climate-related disasters instead of planning for them. There were hurricanes and uh, flooding events that impacted our system for weeks. Pure dumb luck that nobody died. But we didn't really anticipate the economic cost to everybody in that time frame. After looking at the events that occurred, we knew we had to make adjustments. We cannot allow the system to fail anymore. So now our resilience definition is making sure that we plan for these events that occur in the future and minimize the recovery that's necessary to ensure that we can have our system save people's lives or, or, or be safer for everybody and be more efficient economically for everyone. Mark Williams says TxDOT is in the process of defining resilience and utilizing the correct data to measure where resiliency programs are needed. We are putting our resiliency plan together right now. We're one, uh, making sure that we've got a clear understanding and a definition of, of what resiliency means. And we've talked a little bit about that uh, and the comprehensiveness of that plan. But then beginning to look at updated data and information that we have available and how that data is changing and how our weather conditions and precipitation patterns and land use patterns are all changing. Just a few weeks ago, we were responding to a tornado and severe thunderstorm event. At the same time, the panhandle was being impacted by a blizzard uh, at the same time as many of our resources were helping respond to wildfires in many places around the state. Williams says the IIJA funding will help significantly. However, when we interviewed him in May 2022, inflation was already a big concern. Our bid lettings in just this past month were over 20% higher than what our estimates were in total. So right there, 
if pricing continues. We've lost ground on what the IIJA and some of the additional growth in our revenue has provided just because of inflation. So there's a lot of challenges and a lot of demands that we have, not just resiliency related, but just building out and continuing to maintain the, the transportation infrastructure that we rely upon. Every dollar counts. And because making transportation infrastructure more resilient can be hugely expensive, the panel agreed that building consensus around this essential work is critical. Will Watts says that's precisely what's happening in Florida. Florida DOT is a key partner in resiliency response, and we want to be a key partner to our local agencies, how we come up with solutions. And let's, let's collaborate on what those best solutions are so we can maintain and preserve the state of Florida for the long term. And moderator David Sweeney says the big takeaway from this session should be that everyone needs to work and learn together. I think there's real opportunity across all of the state transportation agencies in combination with the USDOT to take the best practices that are bubbling up from those agencies and make sure we share them so that we can all advance this important work together.